What do you think creativity will look like in the new creation? In, in the present creation, it's uh, just kind of an ordering to me of, um, of what already is and a uh, reimagining and, and reordering. Um, so how does that work when, when everything is new and as it should be? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> it's beyond my favorite, for sure. And um, what drives you more, more creative? And how does that manifest itself in, in your music? Uh, I, I like... It's not so much that I'm driven to be more creative, I think, as in just true to... to, uh, to the work, true to what I'm imagining and seeing that I want from the work. So, um, it's not that creative in itself, like I'm just trying to have it be more creative, I'm not sure what that means. Um, I'm just trying to do the work that is true and that resonates with me on some level. And then it's that, uh, my hope is that if it resonates with me and with Lisa and with the rest of the people that I'm working with, um, hopefully others will resonate with it as well, but uh, that I found that that's kind of needs to be the the ultimate test. If it's not resonating with me, it's really easy to think, what will this do for for others? What will others respond to? But I, I found I don't have as good of a grasp on that question as as I do. Does this do something for me? Do I feel something? How do you feel when you have progressed? It's all just as I have progressed, kind of, and as we have progressed, you know. As, uh, Lisa and I, actually this new album that we're finishing up, uh, another member of the collective, John Arndt, has stepped up and started writing with Lisa and I. The last couple albums pretty much just been Lisa and I that have written. So it's nice to get another voice into some of this new material that we're writing right now. Um, and just progress by, I think you get better at it if you take, if you take your craft seriously and you you learn what works and what doesn't, and so I think we've worked hard and spent a lot of time doing it, spent a lot of time touring, making music, and uh, starting to kind of feel more comfortable with, uh, I don't know, over time, you learn to trust your gut more, I guess, you learn to, tr you know, you learn how, what to trust and what, where, where to go with it, and so, uh, the music has definitely evolved and changed over time. It's hard to say what that is exactly. It's, but to me, it's just a reflection of how we have changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you avoid burnout in this process? I think a good rhythm is, is so important in life. It's breathing, it's inhaling and exhaling in a good rhythm. And if you don't get that rhythm right, you'll die. You know, like you have to breathe in and then breathe out and then breathe in and then breathe out and if you're always trying to breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, you'll die. Um, and that's to me what I found with burnout. If I don't have a good rhythm where I'm inhaling as much as I'm giving out, um, then I know that that's a very, I can't just keep doing that yeah. or I will run out, run out of Petrol. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Does creativity require community? Hmm. I don't know if it requires it. There's certainly a lot of great solo geniuses through history, mm -hmm. but I guess they they still inherited whether they still inherited something from a community of sorts. I guess so. Um, I don't know if I'd universalize it to say it needs community, but certainly. It's most effective with community. Um, creativity that comes from not just a single person's mind, but even if it comes from a single person's mind, it, it's gotta eventually find its place within a community to matter um, to the world. So uh, perhaps creativity doesn't need community, but it thrives on community. Mm -hmm. How far, too far, in regards to creativity? 
I don't know. I don't know that, that I would have a concept of what too far would be outside of uh, when it becomes so uh, pretentious and self-interested that it loses any value to it. You know, like, um, I think if somebody's just trying to be creative for the sake of being creative for some kind of stigma or, or you know, um, finding some kind of value and just, I'm more creative than this person. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of flow, what does that even mean? And why, what do you, you're just self-interested. Yeah. Um, but I don't think uh, there's like a spectrum of that you should only be this creative and that, 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 I don't, that doesn't exist in my mind. Um, as creative as the work should be. We dictate, you know, like out of the boxes, the work still has value. Um, we create until it's done. <laughs> to what degree do songs need to portray accurate dogma and doctrine? As much as you want them to, I guess. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think I, if I want to sing a song in my church, um, if I care about, I think I ought to care about doctrine and dogma for a, for a worship song. I think it's um, the songs that we sing influence our theology, influence our ideas, perhaps even more than the sermons and the, you know, the, yeah. the things we sing really get inside of us in our unconscious mind and our, just get into our hearts. Um, so I, I think they, Ought to, but that, that doesn't mean every song doesn't have to be sung in church. You know, yeah. there are some songs I think that are, you know, if you look at the Psalms even, they're not always great theology, actually. If you look at them, some of them are very selfish and like, God, get them, you know, yeah. I hate them. Yeah. Like, smash their babies. I'm like, that's horrible. Yeah. That's awful. But, that, you know, that's not teaching them loving go, that's a, whatever. But, that was not the point of it. The point was an honest expression. So there are times I think that there are certain, um, not everything has to be a theology lesson in my opinion. Everything, yeah. you know, uh, honesty is a value in itself. And just this is how I feel. I don't know if this has any relation to truth. Uh, why have you forsaken me, oh God? What, you know, Jesus, that, that's not actually, is that accurate? Did God actually forsake? Maybe, I don't, whatever, I don't give the theology, but in, to the psalmist, why have you forsaken me? Maybe maybe God didn't forsake me, that's just what I feel, so it's yeah. worth saying. You know, so, um, so I guess it's on what you intend it to be, it, you know, if it's, if it's intended. Uh, I think for when you're intending it, uh, to give it to a community to sing within a worship space, I think it's very important. Outside of that, I think um, there's plenty of room for uh, things other than theology lessons. Yeah. What effect does capitalism have on Christian music? It allows for it to exist. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean... It's weird because, you know, I mean, I've been kind of outspoken in the past about, about what does that even mean, Christian music, and um, doesn't being a Christian, what does Christian mean? A person who follows Jesus, I thought. Yeah. Um, so how does that fit anything but a descriptor of a person who follows Jesus? Um, so people that follow Jesus should make, that want to make music, should, should do it well and do it true to their faith and true to, um, what they believe and what's true in their hearts and um, so that to me is Christian's music <laughs> you know so uh, true Christian so in that sense of the Christian music you know uh, idea capitalism ought to not have that much to do with that yeah. I think it should be like music should be for a Christian um, to me, like the Christian story provides a framework for artistic courage and 
and creating for the sake of creating, it actually gives a reason to do that more than any other story that I've ever heard. And any other human story of, of why we're here and why we exist and why we gotta create. Christianity should provide this amazing framework for artists to create from. Um, a lot of times it doesn't, um, because I think Christianity devolves into something less than what it could be. Um, which leaves us with um, people that take kind of crumbs from the culture, marketing crumbs and, and business ideas and, and things that worked already, and then slap Jesus' name on it. Um, so mostly for good intentions. Yeah. Uh, but it's always modeled with bad intentions to, uh, and selfish ambition and to make a buck. Um, but, uh, you know, there's good, so good Christian music to me is just, has nothing to do with the genre of Christian music. Good Christian music is, is a Christian that is, that is making their music um, with passion, with faith, love, and hope, and, uh, and, and letting their, their faith speak to what they're creating in the world in, in a meaningful way. Um, and that kind of music, Sometimes it's, it's labeled as Christian music in the marketing capitalism world, and sometimes it's not. Um, and I don't care if it is or not. Um, Great.